God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Welcome to our Thursday afternoon devotion. We're recording it a little bit earlier because I have my professional interview at our normal recording time. So we need to get this done so that we don't mess up at 3 o'clock and miss you guys. Today we continue to look at this Sunday's sermon scripture from Jeremiah. And we're going to be continuing to look at what it means when our world unravels and specifically this week, when our dreams unravel. So Anne, do you want to fill us in and get us uh, today's scripture? Okay, we continue in Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah has sent a letter from Jerusalem to the exiles in Babylon. And the letter says, The Lord of heavenly forces, the God of Israel, proclaims to all the exiles I had carried off from Jerusalem to Babylon, Build houses and settle down. Cultivate gardens and eat what they produce. Get married and have children. Then help your sons find wives and your daughters find husbands in order that they too may have children. Increase in number there so that you don't dwindle away. Promote the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it because your future depends on its welfare. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may have remembered yesterday at the end of our devotional part, Anne asked the question, why wasn't Jeremiah in Babylon? And so I did some looking up, and it's a lot more complex than a simple answer. But basically, I'll let you know, Jeremiah was in Jerusalem when Babylon laid siege to Jerusalem. And so he was stuck inside of Jerusalem. When the siege lifted, He left, he was from the tribe of Benjamin, and he tried to go back to his village. When that happened, he was arrested. And it's really complicated as to who arrested him and why and all that. But he was arrested and put in in jail. And he was in jail basically when the Babylonians overthrew Jerusalem and put everybody off to exile. So he was kind of left behind. Now, as he worked his way out and came out of uh, prison, out of jail, he was given the opportunity to go to Beth, to Babylon if he wanted to, but he turned it down because he felt he needed to stay there in Jerusalem. And at some point in time in his life, he felt that he needed to leave and get out of the Babylonian way, and he went to Egypt for a while. So that's where he was in his traveling around. He remained the voice of the people that remained in Jerusalem, and then wrote this letter to those who were in exile, those who were off in Babylon, having to deal with a new place and a new procedure. Now, the reason this letter is significant is because in the Jewish tradition, you didn't marry outside your culture. You didn't eat food outside your culture. It was very important to maintain your cultural isolation, so to speak, your cultural uh, preferences needed to be kept. It was part of their religious life. So Jeremiah, as a prophet of God, and as one of the elders and a teacher, sent this letter to let them know that it is for their welfare, it is for the welfare of the long-term Israel nation, as well that they behave themselves, join in the cultural differences of Babylon, build houses, plant gardens, eat the food that is there, And then if they're there long enough that their children are needing to get married and have children, to encourage them to do so, realizing that they may have to marry outside of the faith and to support the community that they're in. Don't be a thorn in their side. Don't uh, push back against what's going on. They needed to be there to promote and be symbols of God's grace in the midst of the exile. And it did them well. Uh, Babylon, in a lot of ways, really appreciated their, for lack of a better word, the slaves that they brought back from Jerusalem because they were wholehearted, good workers for the betterment, not of themselves, but also for the community. So you may be asking, well, what does that do for us? Well, I want you to know that in our time of isolation and pandemic, I think it is important that we, as exiles in isolation, think about how it is that we can adapt and be a part of this new culture that we're in. So I took the liberty 
of somewhat using Jeremiah's letter as a background to rewrite it as if it was a letter sent to us here in our time and place. So here, these roughly same words that Anne read. The Lord of heaven, the God of Wilton, Iowa, proclaims to all those in isolation and in the pandemic, social distance and wear your mask, cultivate your gardens and eat what they produce, take care of your family, help, then help your children to stay safe and to social distance so that they don't dwindle away. Promote the welfare of the town where you are in isolation. Pray to the Lord during the pandemic for our global future depends on the welfare of all. So there is a correlation between... Very creative. Thank you, man. Super there, creative. There is a correlation between what Jeremiah was telling those Hebrews in isolation that they needed to do what is best for them and best for their community because it was going to be what's best for their known world at that time. And so that's where I'm going to be going this Sunday with it, is that we need to be about what's doing what's best not only for us personally, but also for our community, and thus doing what's best for God and the bringing about of God's kingdom here on earth. And then sometimes that's hard because we all have our preferences. We have our preference of what time we go to worship. We have our preference of what type of music we have in worship. We have a preference of whether I wear a robe, a suit, or a hoodie or a t-shirt. Actually, I guess that's my preference, yeah, but you know, exactly. not yours. But uh, we all have preferences of what really makes us feel like church and community. And at the same time, maybe we need to be thinking about what we have to do as a community to bring about God's preferences for the coming of his kingdom. That's, so, that's very good. You're going to use that Sunday, I hope, that letter or the, the idea of that. That's that's the hope. We'll that's see. Good. I've still got several days to, to go yet on yeah, contemplating this. That would be uh, good. Uh, with that, with that, Anne has got some Yes, news. not good news for us in Iowa. There uh, was a, over the last 24-hour period, it's the highest ever increase in a 24-hour period ever in our state. We had 1,475 new cases. Much of that is in those college co counties uh, like Johnson and Story and Polk, of course, where Des Moines is. There's quite an uptick there, too. So that is incredible. Uh, I just, it just blew my mind. And I just couldn't hardly believe it when I saw that number this morning. Thankfully, that number does not affect our two counties, Muscatine and Cedar County, as as of today, as as at least by today, as terribly. We we only had um, four new cases in Muscatine and no new cases in Cedar County. So the two counties that we're in, that fourteen hundred increase wasn't so wasn't severe here, for but... us. Um, it could reach us, and who knows? But that was not a good news. The second piece is the deaths were high again. We had 17 deaths in the last 24 hour period. It's, it's been just like going up 10, you know, 10, 13, 15, 17. Um, and there was a time when we yeah, had a, even a couple of days where there's maybe only one and or none. And, yeah. um, we've only, well, we've only had, times. we've only had three days that there was none. Yeah, in the last five I months. I think a couple but, times, but like one, two, yes, five, a lot of those. but not what we've had. So this is not voting well for our state. Um, so we need to be in prayer for, for the welfare of our state because other states are doing better than we are. Yeah, we, we ended up in the top 20 yesterday, probably in the top 10. I haven't looked as to where we fell as number of new cases, but um, Iowa, and of course Iowa is still being isolated. You can't go to travel to New York, and you can't travel to um, several other places right now because you come from Iowa. But uh, we need to be praying for those that, because uh, we're, kind of, we're kind of preaching to the choir. We know a lot of yeah, you are in isolation, you're in separation, you're wearing your mask, you're doing all the proper things. So we need to be in prayer and discernment on how we can love people into being more socially responsible uh, for some of this or um, to to be less judgmental uh, during these times because there is, I think there are a lot of people not following 
the guidelines because they're afraid of being ostracized by family, by friends. Um, or they're that, just uh, tired uh, of being of being so long isolated. But it is not looking well for us. Two other statistics that aren't so great for us either is we now have 44 people on ventilators. I think that is one of the highest numbers ever too. Uh, we, we sometimes got up to like 36 back in mm -hmm. May maybe. I don't remember going much beyond 40. And yesterday we hit 40 and now we're at 44 people on ventilators. So that's distressing. And then the final one is we have 36 long-term long care facility outbreaks. I think, again, that is the highest number we've had. Um, I think the 33, maybe 34, but I don't remember 36. Mm -hmm. And um, one of those is in Muscatine County. And it's sadly, that premier estates, according to the site, they've had uh, an outbreak there, but right now nobody's recovered yet oh. um, of, the, of the number there. So just... Keep praying, keep, keep praying, practicing, yeah. keep doing what you need to do. Uh, we know that at least that's a, a small stronghold. But uh, while, we're, while we're dealing with that, you know, the good news is, is that we got some good news after we taped yesterday, and I put it up in the comment section that uh, we've been praying for Greg Brown, and he is home from his uh, heart surgery and recovering. That is good. My One of my art professors had surgery this morning. Um, her name that's is Ann, Ann also. Yep. Oh. And uh, she was in Iowa City, and, of course, it was very... I didn't get the comments till this morning, but she was very frantic about the fact that she was in Iowa City oh. during this huge increase. Yes. So they basically got her out of surgery and shipped her home. They did not want her staying in the hospital oh, and they'll let her do her recovery um, in Mount Pleasant. So uh, I'm going to ask for you, to, I, I don't have her permission to give out her whole name, but her name is Ann. Keep her in your prayers. Of course, we want to keep um, Tom Zelny's niece, Tabby, in our prayers as long as those that are recovering and doing their chemotherapy, because I know they have to stay safer because they're a little more vulnerable. Their uh, immune systems are down. We're now in our second day of school. Today is another shortened day because of the heat. Uh, we want to keep those in our prayers that are dealing with the heat. Uh, I went out to paint the mural a little bit this morning before it got too hot, and I was watching from across the street in the parking lot and where they're working on the Freedom Rock, there was a whole crew there work, getting ready to pour concrete, and I just felt for them because it's going to be, pouring concrete's hard work to begin with, and then to do it in the heat, it's just, uh, the good news, they all look young and very vital, so they'll probably be just fine in the heat, but it still made me, my heart bend for them a little bit. So we keep our farmers, our delivery people, all those that have to be out and about, our police officers and EMTs, all those that are dealing with COVID-19. Having to wear a mask in this heat. Would Having to wear a mask in this heat would be, uh, would be hard. Uh, and I have found that I have a face mask, which or face shield, which in some ways is a little better than having a mask on your face. But there's not a lot of air ventilation around it, which it's, which is, it's supposed to do. But um, it can feel very steamy underneath that. So keep all those people that want to and need to practice safe practices in this heat. Keep them in your prayers as we are praying for all of you. So let us now pray. Lord, we take this time to thank you, to praise you, to ask for your help and your guidance. Lord, be with those that are recovering from their surgeries. Be with Greg and with Ann. Be with those that are dealing with their therapies and their radiation and the chemo and continuing to battle their cancers. Lord, we ask that you help them in their midst of their low immune systems that you may bolster them up and keep them safe. Lord, be with our children, our teachers, our school staff, all those that are having to experience this new way of doing something that was so familiar. Protect them and help them to stay safe. Remind them internally to put that mask back on, to wash their hands so that it doesn't become a social burden to always be told. But Lord, we also ask that you be with those that are suffering from the heat, those that are working in it, those that are wearing the mask, those that are living on the streets, those that are dealing with inadequate air conditioning. Lord, we know that you love us and you care for us and that you have put many of us here on this town and this place so that we can be examples, that we can be your hands and feet, that we can be your resources to reach out to those that are suffering. 
So Lord, remind us to be kind. Remind us to act accordingly. Remind us, as Jeremiah said, to build our houses, plant our gardens, to live fully for the welfare of this community so that we may well be blessed by that and that this community may be blessed because it is in the best interest of the world that every community thrive. So Lord, help us. Help us to remember. Help us to pray. Help us to be in spiritual contact with one another in a way that brings about wholeness and healing. We ask all this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. So quick reminder that uh, this Sunday we do have outdoor worship. It will start at 9 o'clock. It is a confirmation, one of multiple confirmation Sundays coming up. We have five young people that will be being confirmed and they will have reserved spots up front just to let those of the rest of you know you are welcome to sit in your car you're welcome to sit in a lawn chair we have a whole new set of cones got about 40 little cones to put out and that every place that there's a cone is basically a spot for one or two people maybe three people to sit around that cone and they're spaced out for that if you have a family that's larger than that take the space between two cones and that'll then keep everybody still socially distanced uh, but that'll allow you to be a partake of this wonderful opportunity to bless some of our young people as they make that choice to affirm and confirm their baptism and join our church if you'd like to we will be live streaming it hopefully on facebook live so that's where you look at it. and if you can't make it then join us at seven o'clock on sunday night for the editor's cut that'll include more music and some prayers and you can watch our confirmation students get confirmed at that time. So with all of that in mind, remember that God loves you, Anne and I love you, and there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. Peace be with you. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good.